modern dating terms and definitions, and how to respond to them in the dating world. Seriously, there seems to be so many dating terms out there. I mean, do you know any? Well, this list of 50 plus dating terms should really help everyone navigate dating field better knowing these terms and their definitions. See if your future romantic prospect exhibits some of these terms, and if they do, you might run. <laughs> and see if you might exhibit some of these definitions as well. Kind of keeps us all on our toes. All right, these dating terms and definitions are in alphabetical order. So it's not like they're in any kind of order, except they're just alphabetized. All right, so number one, 304. I never heard of this. A 304 spells ho on a calculator when typed in and then flipped upside down. A 304 is a rather skanky and promiscuous woman, also known as a ho. So I guess if you're called a 304, ladies, I guess you know what that means now. Promiscuous ho. <laughs> Weird. 304. Number two, aromanticism or aromantic. And that's A-R-O-M-A-N-T-I-C. A certain portion of the population does not experience the feelings of romantic love that seem to come so naturally for others. Interesting. Aromantic. Hmm. It's kind of like an adjective. It describes someone. Not a romantic, a romantic person, but aromantic, you know, a romantic. Hmm. Interesting. Three, asexual. Three, asexual. It specifies someone doesn't experience sexual attraction. Interesting. Now, this doesn't mean that they don't have or like sex. It's just that he or she doesn't feel the need in the same way most people do about sex. Having sex or desiring sex. Could be that no one is interested in them sexually. So they default to this kind of thinking. Perhaps if the right person came along into their life that could lead them more properly in the bedroom, their mindset could change for the better about sex. So that term, asexual. Interesting. Number four, and this is where it starts getting good. Benching. Benching. Benching is a term when someone keeps a potential romantic mate on hold just in case others don't work out. If you're the one being benched, the person who is doing the benching might reach out just often enough to keep you on the hook when they really only invest time in the relationship that they're in or come around when they don't have any other options from time to time. That's a rotten way to treat people. Goodbye. Don't get benched. Hmm. Number five, breadcrumbing. This is when someone is leading someone on. Typically, if someone is breadcrumbing you, it happens via text and or social media. They engage in occasional chats and messages and they might even flirt, but they don't intend to actually pursue a relationship with you. Goodbye to that person. Number six, caking, C-A-K-I-N-G. This type of flirting is old school. Caking is a slight variation on flirting where you're sweeter and more receptive than usual to the person you're trying to connect with. Don't do this kind of, you know, trying to layer on extra icing and being extra sweet. No, that's caking. Mm. Number seven, caspering. <laughs> this was funny. Most of us have heard of ghosting and Casper the friendly ghost, right? Well, caspering is slowly disappearing in a nicer, if that's possible, a nicer way. She may be a great person who is totally into you, but she just isn't doing it for you. You don't want to hurt her or him. So you may start responding to every other text or just not being available for all dates, but just a few. You may even be truthful with the other person before you completely disappear from their life. That's Caspering, <laughs> being a friendly ghost. Uh, Number eight, catfishing. This is to deceive or to swindle, etc., by assuming a false identity or personality online. I fell in love with the other person until I realized I was being catfished. Yikes. Number nine, cloaking. Consider cloaking the new ghosting, only much, much crueler. 
where being ghosted involves your potential love interest simply going radio silent on all channels of communication, you know, getting cloaked means they have not only disappeared, they've straight up unmatched and blocked you on all the apps. How rude. <laughs> Thank you for leaving my life and opening new doors for a better person to walk through. As you might say to someone who cloaks you, eh, fine, you don't want to date me? You want to block me? Okay, see ya, bye. <laughs> Number 10, cookie jarring. This was a cute one. Cookie jarring, like a cookie jar. The reverse form of benching. If you've been seeing someone and you have not yet defined the relationship and then find out that they've been seeing someone else behind your back, you've been cookie jarred. That is, keeping you handy in case the other person doesn't work out. Cookie jarring. Yikes. 11. Cuffing season. Such as making your relationship exclusive or official kind of only during fall and winter months where individuals have a strong desire to be in a monogamous relationship. Winter can make us feel lonely and bored and left out about the aesthetics of having someone on your arm to attend holiday events, etc. Cuffing season. Hmm. Number 12. Curved. Getting curved is being rejected, shot down, turned aside, said no to, dissed or dismissed. Yes, it sucks being curved. When you get curved, you need to take a moment to properly absorb all of the no that just hits you. A curve is often subtler than a flat out no. Think your texts gets seen but not responded to. So even if it hurts the same, it carries a name that implies a redirection rather than an outright rejection. So getting curved is being rejected, shot down, turned aside, dissed or dismissed. Yeah. Mm. Cushioning, number 13. Cushioning. When you fall, especially if it's a hard fall, you want something to cushion your blow. Cushioning is when you're in a relationship, but you aren't sure if it's going to last. So you start chatting with other people and stringing them along that way, if you break up with your person that you're interested in and it doesn't work out, you've got other prospects waiting to catch your fall and be your cushion. Mm. Number 14, daddy. You know, over the past few years, daddy culture has risen to become pretty mainstream. These days, it's normal for teens and assorted millennials to use the word daddy in either a sexual or a sex adjacent context. You might call your partner daddy in bed, or you might acknowledge a hot older man's daddy vibes because of his muscles, body hair, facial hair, personal wealth, something. Either way, yes, it's kind of low-key incestuous, <laughs> but the people have spoken. Etymology, from the word daddy, meaning father. She keeps on texting me, choke me, daddy. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> choke me, daddy. I want to ride you, Daddy. <laughs> oh, God. You know, hey, I'm just reporting it. I didn't write it. I didn't make this up. You know, this is somebody else's creation. This is society. Yikes. Where are we headed? Number 15, dater view. Dater view. A date that feels more like a job interview. A dater view. God, yeah, we went on our first date. I was asked so many questions. I felt like I was on a dater view. <laughs> These are funny. Number 16, DTR, DTR, acronym for define the relationship. You know, at some point you're seeing somebody a month, six months, a year or more, might be time to define the relationship. Okay. Mm. Number 17, emergency call. Yes. An emergency call is a fake out that allows you to politely get out of a particular bad date. If you can tell the night's not going, the way you want and you think it's going to be like a train wreck from the earliest moments, and you often can, but you're genuinely afraid of insulting the stranger you're sitting across from, a fake emergency call from a friend saying, oh, your brother's in the hospital, oh, your cat died early on in the evening can be a real lifesaver. So when you go out for those, you know, dates for the first time, you might want to have an emergency call set up. Hmm. <laughs> Number 18, freckling season. Freckling season. 
Basically, it's the opposite of cuffing season. Instead of finding someone to date during the cold months, this is finding someone to date during the sunny months, you know, when freckles come out because of the sun. Remember that song from the movie Grease? Just think summer lovin' and you get the idea. Number 19. This is a, this is a real doozy. Half night stand. Half night stand. You know, the traditional one night stand involves meeting a sexually attractive stranger and taking them home for a night of unattached sex. They leave in the morning and you may not ever see them again. Well, the half night stand cuts out the staying over part. The late night guest leaves straight after the sex is over. They don't wait for morning to come. They don't sleep over. There's no hugging and cuddling and snuggling, no spooning. Nope. That's a half night stand. Number 20, ghosting. When you suddenly disappear from someone you've been on a few dates with by not responding in hopes that they get the hint. The act of suddenly ceasing all communications with someone the person is dating but no longer wishes to date. Better definition is you and I meet, we have amazing chemistry, we hang out and have some sex, you know, maybe I bond to you and then you disappear, ultimately breaking my heart. You don't answer my calls or texts, and I am so confused and concerned. Sadly, ghosting happens all the time now. Why does ghosting happen? It's natural to give someone the silent treatment if we don't want to hear from them. We got to take the hint. And again, there's that phrase that I really like to remember. Rejection is redirection. So if you're going to ghost me, I appreciate that. You know, I mean, student teacher, I'm always wanting to learn. And if this is how you're going to treat me, I'm glad you got it out now so I can make room for the next person to come through who might treat me better. You know, and the opposite is, you know, don't ghost people per se. Be upfront. Say, hey, I don't think things are working out. And I do wish you the best. I wish you well. But I think I'm looking for something just just, just different. And it isn't you. It isn't me. It's just what it is. It's biology. It's, it's life. It's, it's almost no one's really to blame. These are our bodies. But we didn't pick our bodies. We didn't pick our brains. We didn't pick our likes and our dislikes and our favorites. and our No. So we just have to be nice, kind, and gentle when we say, hey, we got to take things. And that's actually, again, more reason to take things slow. You can find out a lot about a person and you could be ghosted or you could be let down or curved or whatever before anything gets really serious. But I've seen all kinds of situations. Hey, 21, hardballing. This is actually a really good one. Hardballing. Where you tell someone all of your expectations up front before you even go out on a first date. Well, and that's hardballing. You know, that way you don't waste time. You can weed out anyone who may not be as serious as you are about getting into the relationship or the kind you want to be in. You might call it the killer filter. Actually, this isn't a bad idea per se. With so many prospects to go through, why not get to the heart of the matter and see if there's not just chemistry, but commonalities, similar interests up front. I talk more about this in an upcoming section, so stay tuned. Hardballing. Yeah. Number 22, haunting. Mm, haunting. Haunting occurs when you think you've finished a date that didn't work out or even a serious relationship, but then you see signs your ex is now lurking around your social media accounts, commenting on your posts. Often the notifications are deliberate attempts to remind you that they exist. Yeah. Just when you wanted to forget about them, they haunt you and they come around. Sheesh. Get away. Number 23. Love bombing, a tactic used by most abusers. They get you hooked in them, you know, with their intense whirlwind of romance. And once you are totally invested in them, they will suddenly change. There will be a shift in their behavior. They may become volatile or nasty or give you the silent treatment for a minor misdemeanor. Love bombing. So just watch it. If somebody's, you know, caking you and really putting the icing on to, to make you think that they're really in your corner, that they really love you. And they're just bombing you with all this affection and attention and gifts and whatever. Be suspicious. Trust no one. Suspect everyone. <laughs> Number 24, kitten fishing. Kitten fishing. When you present yourself on a dating app 
in an unrealistic positive way. This could be as simple as using outdated photos or excessive filters to portray a different lifestyle than the one you actually hold. Not as blatant as its sister term, catfishing, where you completely misrepresent yourself. No, kitten fishing is just when you present yourself on a dating app, for example, in just a little unrealistically positive way, just to try to bring someone to you. Don't do it, you know, no, don't do it. And number 25, love flooding. Love flooding is an effort usually directed at someone you're interested in or in a relationship with where you flood them with compliments and flattery and verbal seduction, sexual or non-sexual attention to win them over more to your wishes or desires. Love flooding. Don't do it. Wow. That concludes part one of two in this audio series on dating terms and definitions that we might want to get to know. You just listened to part one. Let's check out the next audio, part two, and I'll go through 25 plus more terms and definitions that we need to get to know about in the dating world so we're not lost and confused out there. Oh my gosh, misdirected and trust no one, suspect everyone. <laughs> Let's check it out.